with me. So we checked out the Steel Series Arctis Nova Pro Wireless a few months back, and you guys absolutely loved my review. And even until this day, it's my favorite gaming headset that I use for pretty much everything. But I've also been checking out the wired version of this model. And here's my take on it, since a ton of you guys are asking me, should you go for the wired or wireless version? Let's find out in today's episode. Again, we have a full-on premium wired gaming headset with Game Deck that has everything you could possibly ever need, except being a wireless headset. But it still has the performance and design to set this apart from the rest. Now this does come at a price tag of 250 bucks, so not cheap by any means. We're gonna figure out if it's worth it with today's video while stacking this guy up against some of my favorite headsets. From the Quantum 800 from JBL, to the Mobius, and even my favorite set of everyday headphones. Now the Arctis Nova Pro Wireless checked off pretty much everything for me, but how does this wired model stack up against the more expensive counterparts? Now in the past, the wired version of the headset always had better audio quality thanks to software and high res. If you guys remember the Arctis 7, the Arctis Pro Wireless, they all kind of looked the same. Nothing was really different about them until you got to the software and the high res audio. That's where it kind of set the headset apart. And it's no different with this model, except now we have a complete new redesign that looks just like its older, more expensive brother, the Nova Pro Wireless. So we're gonna find out how much of a difference you actually get. For me, the big difference is obviously the high res audio, which really sets this guy apart from the rest. And you also save a hundred bucks, but there's a lot more than that. This model is compatible with pretty much everything, PC, Nintendo, PlayStation, and Xbox. The main difference is that this model trades off wireless capability and active noise cancellation for high res audio. Now, if you don't care for those features, then let's see if this is the wired option for you out there. Now, before we dive deep into the review, I would like to take a second and thank Anchor for sponsoring this segment of today's episode with this 10-in-1 hub that they sent over. You can connect your MacBook to three monitors seamlessly without any issues. Perfect for those of you guys out there that need to get some work done after those intense gaming sessions. We've all been there. It's actually pretty crazy. You have two HDMI ports, a display port, a 100 watt power delivery port, a USB-C 3.2 Gen 1 port, a USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port, two USB-A 2.0 ports, an ethernet port, and an aux in and out port. You can connect up to three monitors to your MacBook, like I mentioned, and each monitor can display different content to make multitasking an absolute breeze. Another awesome feature is it also supports up to 100 watt fast charging for your laptop, and it charges your phone at the same time through its 30 watt USB type C delivery port. Now, if you are looking for hubs or docking stations for your MacBook, Anchor's 563 USB-C 10 in one docking station with unrivaled performance will definitely meets your needs. You can support up to one 4K display at 30 hertz and two extra 2K displays at 60 hertz with this model. So for those of you with those massive workstations that need an all-in-one dock for everything, as of right now, this is as good as it gets. Make sure you guys check out the links below for more information and thank you to Anchor for sponsoring this segment of today's episode. Now for build quality, this thing has premium written all over it. You still have an elastic headband to go with its matte black and gunmetal design. The leatherette ear cups feel super comfortable and are an upgrade in my opinion to the memory foam we got with all the previous models. Now one thing that stands out for me with this sick design is it's just like its wireless model. It's also very minimalist. Your left ear cup has a mic mute button, a volume wheel, and a retractable microphone that doesn't even look like it's there. And at the bottom you have a 3.5 millimeter port for its wired connection. The ear cups swivel and fit comfortably into position for those longer gaming sessions when you need to rest these on your shoulders. Now in terms of functionality, you get that new game deck which is 30% smaller than before and it looks super similar to the one that you get with the wireless model. You have that same OLED screen with two USB ports on the back that lets you connect to your console or your PC. The headset contains a line in port if you'd like to connect speakers and control them with the deck. Now the headphone jack is on the left side and you also have a line out that sends audio signals to your mixer or PC sound card. Now rotating that same dial, adjust the volume while tapping it launches the chat mix settings. Holding the dial activates a menu that lets you swap between those USB sources and tweak audio options such as your side tone. Now the software is free to use and it's available for Mac or PC and now it has a new feature called Sonar, which lets you actually enable your simulated surround sound. It also gives you a full equalizer for your game audio and a 10 band equalizer for your chat and microphone audio. But just like Razer, you have to create an account for Sonar, which I absolutely hate. So you can save your presets for favorite games like Call of Duty and Apex, so I guess that's a plus. But for me in the past, I've always had a terrible experience with software, especially from Razer. It just is buggy and you have to create an extra account, sends you more emails, slows down your PC. I just, I absolutely hate having to download software to use a gaming headset. 
Now, Warzone 2.0 launched, and I've mostly been playing that and Modern Warfare, which for me are the perfect titles to go ahead and check out the sound quality for you guys. I'm gonna be honest, the high-res audio in itself is what sets this thing apart from the pack. It's frightening how realistic everything sounds. Footsteps, bullet spring, even with a suppressor on, it sounds absolutely amazing. Now, it doesn't stop there. Listening to music was just as good. You do experience slight distortion at maximum volume, but it does a great job of keeping that in the ear cups and not bleeding too much for those around you. Now, one thing that particularly stood out for me with this gaming headset was how well it balanced gameplay with music and audio quality, especially when you're talking to your friends in Discord or say party chat. It sounds absolutely amazing and it does a great job of doing this. But unlike the wireless model, you don't get active noise cancellation with this headset and it's wired. So that's kind of where that $100 comes into play. But by now you're probably wondering, well, how does the microphone quality sound? And to be honest, I'm curious to find out myself. Let's stack this thing up against some of my favorite gaming headsets while we also see how much background noise and keyboard clicks the microphone on this headset actually picks up. Now, ear sweat wasn't an issue for me. I'm not saying you're not gonna experience any. If you are in a warmer setting, you will experience some ear sweat, but I wouldn't say it's any more than other gaming headsets out there. And clamping force, not too bad with this. Just like the Arctis Nova Pro Wireless, if you are wearing glasses or something like that in your gaming sessions, you shouldn't experience any discomfort with this headset. Now, you guys know the drill, new soundproof game room. Currently, I'm talking to you guys on the Shure MV7. Let's go ahead and switch over to the microphone on the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro Wired headset to see what it sounds like in comparison. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro wired gaming headset. If you are new to the channel, please make sure you subscribe. And only if you end up liking this video, please make sure you smash that like button for me. Now let's go ahead and stack up the microphone on this headset versus the Odyssey Penrose, the Odyssey Mobius, the Corsair HS60 wireless gaming headset, and also the HyperX Cloud 2 wireless to see how it stacks up. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro wired gaming headset. This is what the microphone quality sounds like with the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro wireless gaming headset. I figured I might as well throw this one in there too. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Corsair HS80 wireless gaming headsets. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Odyssey Penrose wireless gaming headsets. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the HyperX Cloud 2 wireless gaming headsets. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Odyssey Mobius gaming headsets. Once again, this is what the microphone quality sounds like on the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro wired gaming headset. Once again, this is what the microphone quality sounds like on the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro wireless gaming headset. Once again, this is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Corsair HS80 wireless gaming headset. Once again, this is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Odyssey Penrose wireless gaming headset. Once again, this is what the microphone quality sounds like on the HyperX Cloud 2 wireless gaming headset. Once again, this is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Odyssey Mobius gaming headset. And in my opinion, it's the best sounding microphone out of any gaming headset that's on today's market. But I'm curious to know what you guys think. Let me know down below which one you think sounds the best. Now, another test I love doing for you guys is to see how much keyboard clicks and background noise the microphone on these headsets actually pick up. So we're about a foot and a half away from the keyboard here. So... Just like the Nova Pro Wireless, the microphone is absolutely fantastic. It doesn't pick up any background noise as far as keyboard clicks go. It does pick up a little bit more when I start talking because that's when my noise gate opens up. So yeah, whether you plan on using the microphone on this headset for Discord, party chat, game chat, streaming, recording, whatever it is, that's what the microphone quality sounds like and that's how much background noise and keyboard clicks it actually picks up. There's a lot to love about this headset. Sure, it doesn't have wireless capability and ANC, but you have the more expensive wireless model for that. The only thing possibly holding this headset back is a $250 price tag for some gamers out there. So if you are on a budget and want something just as good for half the price, I'd still recommend the JBL Quantum 800 as a backup option. Now it's a bit bulkier and doesn't have the best battery life, but it has all of the same features this offers with active noise cancellation and it's wireless for hundred bucks less. Now for me, this is as good as it gets for a $250 gaming headset, especially when it comes to wired models. I absolutely love this thing. Now I do prefer wireless, so I'm gonna be using that model, but for those of you guys that wanna save some money, pick up the wired version. I promise you guys, you won't be disappointed. But I'm curious to know what you guys think. Let me know down below where you'll also find links to everything that we covered in today's episode. If you wanna see more, make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Detroit Fury. And if you enjoyed this content, please make sure you smash that like button for me, subscribe. Turn on your post notifications, it really means a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in my next episode. Peace.